Hey everybody, this is Time Rider with a little midweek matchbox action. Uh, this is the number 19D Lotus Formula One racer, which is a model of the Lotus 33, which, uh, as I understand it, won a whole bunch uh, over in, uh, I'm assuming, uh, the European race circuit. And uh, it's uh, one of those staple matchboxes I think everybody ought to have. So, Anyway, I'm going to restore this one, so stick around. Casting, of course, was pretty straightforward for, uh, you know, an open-wheel matchbox. They have a few of them that are put together. This one had some bent uh, exhaust tubes that I was going to have to straighten. Otherwise, it looked in pretty good shape. It was well-worn, but... Uh, Held together with a single rollover post and then these those exhaust pipes uh, act as a framework to hold the back of the car together. Apparently Lotus was, the company was founded in 1948 and they're still in business today. And there's supposed to be a little plastic driver in here. Of course, those are usually missing. Uh, these, This one had the old, uh, they were almost like a paper decal. The base was pretty clean, just maybe needed to be polished up a little bit. And a little shake for luck. I want to clean this uh, chassis up really well and kind of clean the wheels up, so uh, we're going to take them off. This is uh, apparently modeled after the Lotus 33, which was modeled after the Lotus 25. The 33 uh, went into racing service in 65, as did this uh, casting. A little bit of wire wheel here just to clean it up. It's just a bare metal, you know, chassis, so we're going to leave it as a bare metal chassis. Trying to straighten these out just a little bit more. Lotus has a pretty storied history. They very nearly went under, I guess, in about 1980. And then uh, a number of things occurred there in the early 80s, one of which was a, an agreement with Toyota uh, for some uh, exchange of intellectual uh, knowledge and whatnot. And, you know, lately, I think I've mentioned this before, I've taken to, I'd rather just polish, polish these axles. I think they look better than when they're painted. And then, of course, I grind a little punt into the end of the axle uh, to help me put it all back together, together a little bit later on. And you can see the casting has... Uh, raised guides for the placement of the decal. In some instances I would file those off, but since I'm restoring this one I won't. That new stripper that I'm trying, not, not as good as the aircraft stripper, even the the new aircraft stripper shall we say. Um, seems like with, uh, with the, those I can soak it overnight, but I still wind up either having to wire wheel it and uh, put it in the stripper again or uh, spend more time cleaning up the casting. You can see I kind of what I one of the things I'll do is I'll put a little mark on the drill bit and that kind of lets me know that's as far as I can go. 
So uh, if I hit that mark, I'm through the casting. So it just gives me a guide. I know guys, some guys use tape. That's how I do it. And then, you know, I got to put it together at some point. I'll tell you, I found that most of the time if I have damage occur where I have to do something over, you know, not most of the time, but a lot of time it happens during reassembly. You want it to go together very smoothly. This one looks pretty good. Just going to tap it out here with a uh, drop of oil from my Anderson oiler. You know, I gotta say too, as I'm learning to use my new bench, I need to better delineate where I'm working. I still find myself drifting off, and it isn't that I don't know where the center is. That's not it. Uh, I just get so intensely working, and I don't realize that I've slipped off. But you know me too, I can't resist a good polish. And then uh, I painted it with white Duplicolor primer. And this is just your basic Tammy of green with just a, a whisper of some black in it. I wanted to deepen it just a little bit. So I'll throw a tack coat on here. Go play a couple levels of Unreal Tournament. That's kind of my timer nowadays. And then, you know, uh, get into those heavier coats. You would think, oh, well, you know, there really isn't much to paint on this. And yeah, you're right, but it still has like six sides, you know. You call it the bottom. Um, might use less paint, but you have to be diligent all the same. Once I had everything cleaned up, uh, it's time to put those hubs back on. I actually kind of had to tap that hub through. It was pretty tight. And then I, I'm doing something a little different with the, the wheels, just trying it out. I have that uh, UV sensitive resin, right? And so I'm putting it on there with resin. And I like the resin. I use it for a lot of things. Um, it doesn't have a, an enormous amount of strength, but it's enough to hold the wheels on this thing. So, uh, I mean, because it's just going to be shelved, you know what I mean? I'm not going to be playing with it. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to put it on the shelf. So, you can see there I got my decals on there. I don't have any footage of that. Those I got from Black Square Decals in the UK. I like their stuff. Usually really well, uh, well done. Fits where it's supposed to fit. Looks like it's supposed to look. And I sourced this little guy out, if I recall, from Steve Flowers, also in the UK. I needed two of them. I don't remember what the other one was for. It was another similarly configured racer. Might have even been another Lotus, that one I customized. And put her back together. And go back to where we started with this uh, weak excuse for a Lotus. Clearly somebody had some fun with this and I really like that. Uh, but let's take a look at where I wound up. So there you go. The Matchbox number 19D Lotus 4 wheel one Racer. Be an episode of the bench following the video.
This is Time Rider, and I'll leave the light on for you. Hey, thanks for hanging around for this edition of The Bench. I don't know if you all remember, but for a while I was working on this number 28C Jaguar, and uh, I had an issue with the glass that I sourced uh, not fitting. Well, I finally got around to uh, getting an order together, and uh, I'm hoping that the glass for this will be here soon. I have everything I need. All I have to do is put together the video, so sit tight for that. And I, uh, I also have to say that it sure didn't take long. Um, I, this is from my tripod. I have actually a pretty decent tripod, and that screws onto the bottom of the camera. And then it goes on the tripod in this kind of like a quick release sort of affair. And I got tired of taking that piece on and off of my camera because I, I still do tripod work in addition to the overhead work. I'm sure you can tell when you watch my videos. So now I can leave this on my camera all the time because I bought an extra one of those mounts and mounted it on my wall mount. Uh, so I can, uh, you, I can just leave that piece on my camera all the time when I, uh, when I shoot my videos. And I, among the projects I've got going on, cause I do, I have quite a few, uh, is this Matchbox Superfast 260Z. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm polishing it and I'm getting it ready cause I'm going to spectra flame this thing. And I'm still kind of up in the air about whether or not I want to I want to put the super fast wheels back on and just kind of do a sort of a resto mod. Um, the wheels, the super fast wheels, are in wonderful condition. So uh, hang tight for that. If you if you have a thought on the matter, go ahead and post it below. Uh, I know one of the things about the super fast is uh, is very unusual for people to work with them. I usually don't because the the wheels are usually so messed up. But anyway, so sit tight for that because I'm uh, getting pretty close to laying paint on it. I started working on this uh, 1961 Chevy Impala hardtop. Uh, it's a Hot Wheels that I got in a uh, Fast and Furious set. I've never been a great big fan of the movie or anything, but I am a fan of the car. Uh, so anyway, I invest in a, a set of uh, fine files and uh, use them to file off some casting lines. I already kind of got an idea where I'm going to go with this, so stick around for that. And that's actually all I have for you all. And uh, if you're going to comment below, please be respectful. Thumb up, thumb down, whatever you choose. This is Time Rider, and I hope everybody has a great rest of the week.